Okay, our next speaker is Laura Curtis. She's a research assistant at the Lincoln Park Zoo. And Laura received her master's degree from the University of Chicago with her thesis on behavioral effects of providing a choice for outdoor access for captive gorillas. She's currently a research assistant at the Fisher Center working with Dr. Lydia Hopper and behavioral economic studies and running, how do you say that? Guologo. The Guologo <laughs> Video Lab in collaboration with Cricket Sands and David Morgan. Please welcome Laura. Hi, can everyone hear me through this? Yeah. Okay, great. Um, hi, so I'm Laura Curtis from the Fisher Center at Lincoln Park Zoo. And today I'm going to talk about the importance of choice and control for captive animals. And specifically, I'm going to tell you about a study we ran that looked at the effects of choice on great apes. One of the criticisms you often hear of zoos is that animals in captivity are unable to express the full range of behaviors that they would express in the wild. And thus, one of the most important duties of zoos is to help animals to express those behaviors. One way to do that is to give animals as much control over their environment as we can, and choices about what they're going to do with their time. This can be done and is often done by creating complex environments that allow animals to express many natural behaviors, um, including climbing, digging, running, hiding, um, areas of shade, areas of sunlight. Uh, this picture here is one of our exhibits in the RCAA at Lincoln Park Zoo. And you can see there are, we've got trees, there's nests up high, there are areas to climb, mulch floors. Out here is an outdoor environment, which I'll get to in a few minutes. The more of these things we can give to animals, the better. A number of studies have looked at the effect of choices in their environment on primates. One in particular I'd like to mention with macaques gave captive macaques control over white noise using a lever, white noise in their environment. And the group given control over the noise compared to a group given no control showed lower cortisol, lower cortisol levels, lower aggressive behaviors. However, when that group lost control over the white noise, their cortisol levels actually spiked and went higher than those of the control group who had never had control over the noise. As anyone who's ever been driving down the highway and then had to slow down and stop at a construction zone knows, loss of control can be particularly unpleasant. Choice of location, then, is another form of control over the environment. Now, many zoos have indoor and outdoor enclosures or areas for their animals, but in most, in most cases, the animal's location is determined by humans, whether they're indoors or outdoors. Uh, two studies have previously looked at the behavioral effects of giving animals the choice between their indoor and outdoor enclosures, uh, one with pandas and one with polar bears. In both cases, the animals were normally housed on exhibit during the day with no access to holding or any other area of the enclosure. And in both cases, when the animals were given access to just a small off-exhibit holding space, uh, they showed positive behavioral and welfare effects. Uh, the giant pandas showed a decrease in agitation behaviors and urinary cortisol. And the panda bears, excuse me, the polar bears showed decreases in stereotypies, including pacing, and increases in social affiliative behaviors. Also, in both cases, the, both species chose to remain on exhibit the majority of the time anyway. So this suggests that having that open door and having that space, just knowing they could go there if they wanted to, may have had, made this difference in their behavior. So we, at the Fisher Center, asked the question that we always ask, what about the great apes? Based on the previous literature, we predicted that when chimpanzees and western lowland gorillas were given a choice to access an outdoor space, that having that choice would, get, would have an effect on their behavior, that the effect would be strongest for the species for whom the outdoors is most important, uh, based on their natural histories and differing social structures, we expected to see some difference and that as our rates of abnormal behavior in this population are already extremely low, we didn't expect to see a change. The Regenstein Center for African Apes, the RCAA, 
has naturalistic enclosures with many, well, naturalistic and also functional elements, as you saw in that picture earlier, um, including trees, platforms, mulch floors. But importantly, every indoor enclosure, indoor day room, has an adjacent outdoor enclosure, separated by, you can see these glass doors that are controlled by remote control by the zookeepers. Most of the year, as long as the temperature is above about 40 degrees Fahrenheit, those doors are left open and the apes can choose whether they wish to be indoors or outdoors. And you can see in the picture here, Kathy is standing indoors looking at the outdoor environment. Um, our study encompassed, uh, excuse me, our study encompassed six chimpanzees and nine gorillas. Um, data, to assess the effect of the choice to go outdoors, we compared sessions in which the apes had, were indoors and had the doors open so they had access to get outside to sessions in which those glass doors were closed. So in both cases, the apes were always indoors. We only looked at their behavior indoors to mitigate any effect of being outdoors when the doors were open or when the doors were closed. Uh, data was collected in 10-minute focal follows. Um, we conduct, conducted, excuse me, collected behavioral data, and importantly, we recorded whether, where the apes were, indoors or outdoors, and whether they had that choice to go indoor or outdoor. And this came from about a two-year subset of our larger data set. When given the choice to go outdoors, we saw that chimpanzees, when given the choice but staying in, showed higher rates of social behavior, that's the green here when given choice, and higher rates of self-grooming behavior. So I'm sorry, to situate you, the green is when they had the choice to go outdoors but stayed in, versus when they had no choice. We think for the chimpanzees that this indicates a general increase in arousal, that both their social behaviors went up and their self-grooming behaviors went up. The gorillas were a little different. Uh, we did not see a change in social or grooming behaviors. Instead, when the gorillas were given choice, that's these here, they showed lower rates of feeding behaviors and lower rates of object manipulation behaviors. We think there are a couple of explanations for the differences between the two. Uh, we know that this gorilla group uses their outdoor space less often than the chimpanzees. This map here shows one of our outdoor enclosures, and the dark spots here are the chimpanzee space use from an earlier study in our uh, facility. And you can see they use the outdoor space a fair amount. In the same space, the gorillas use it a lot less often. Uh, this came out to about 33% of time the chimpanzees went outside when they could to about 7% for the gorillas. So we know they use their outdoor space less often than the chimpanzees. It's possible that the choice to go outdoors was simply a choice of less value to the gorillas than to our chimpanzees. And finally, we saw changes in inactivity for both species. Um, and to orient you here, this is inactivity, so when they weren't performing any other behavior, as opposed to when they were performing social feeding, et cetera, those types of behaviors. For the chimpanzees, when they were given the choice to go outdoors, they showed lower inactivity, meaning they were more active, which adds to this idea that they were showing general higher arousal when given choice. The gorillas were the opposite. When given choice, they actually showed higher inactivity, meaning they rested more, um, which is less surprising in that for gorillas, well, we hope that this shows a decreased arousal in the gorillas, as when gorillas are very active, we can often think that they're showing restlessness or stress. We think that this means, maybe, that we saw a decreased arousal in our gorillas. So we feel we saw from this study that the choice to go outdoors, whether or not they used it, had an effect on their behavior and we hope on their positive welfare as well. Um, zoos are well suited to this kind of study because we can control these variables while still giving animals a complex environment. But this was one zoo and one particular, two particular groups of animals, one from each species. It would really be important in the future to investigate the same kind of choice in other zoos with other individuals, to look at individual preference, the design of the building, and if possible, to be able to look at physiological factors. We were unable to look at hormones or cortisol, and that would be a really interesting piece of the story. So thank you to the RCAA staff. Any questions? That was nicely done, well within your time limit. Oh, okay. Does anybody have any questions for Laura? I can't, so just yell <laughs> or stand up or something.
Yeah, I just wanted to ask you a question that sort of comes from David's talk, uh, mm -hmm. the component of natural compared to health and, and happy. So these gorillas, um, given the preference, uh, in your earliest in the earlier study that you referred to, wanted to spend virtually all their time indoors. So I, I'm just concerned about whether if we use that as a measure of natural preference, we're going to end up with uh, zoo exhibits where gorillas spend their whole time indoors, and in fact, we don't provide outdoors for them. So I'm just worried about what we use as a standard for natural. Do we go back to some progenitor species, or do we look at the zoo animal itself, or, or how do we deal with that problem? I think that's a fair question. You don't want to do is look at this and say, oh, well, that group of gorillas doesn't go outside. They don't need an outdoor exhibit. Let's not give it to them. Um, I think it would be fair to say that we need to see what it is about the outdoor exhibit they didn't like. And a bigger study would be helpful to see if it was more of an individual preference thing altogether, if it was those gorillas don't go outside as much compared to others. There, the fact that we saw any effect at all at least suggests that it's worth giving them that outdoor space and that we would need to find a choice, maybe that's a better, higher value for the gorillas to answer this question of choice specifically. But we wouldn't want to take it too far and say, oh, they don't need the outdoors just because they don't use it often. It doesn't mean it's of no value at all. Just to kind of follow up on that, my understanding is that the Lincoln Park Zoo, the gorilla environment, indoor environments are very heavily enriched compared to a lot of other facilities whose indoor environments may just be holding areas, which while they are enriched, are not maybe quite the same level or perceived level of enrichment for the gorillas. So I, I don't know that there's as much danger of extrapolating from just this particular population that gorillas don't like outside because I think a lot of facilities would say, no, our gorillas really like outside. That's fair, um, yeah. <laughs> it, it may just be more to do with the quality of the indoor exhibit for the gorillas at Lincoln Park. Or I think that's fair. And I think the point I hope to make here is that the choice is important, whether or not these particular animals showed the effect we were hoping they would show. Have you done any, um, have you looked at the factors of dominance in terms of, is it dominant individuals maybe preventing others from choosing to go outside? I know this is something which has been looked at a lot in farm animal welfare with free-ranging hens, etc., with many hens not going outside because dominant individuals are dominating the, the outside access. I just wondered whether that was something that you'd looked at, maybe dominant individuals not allowing others to come outside or by those being outside, others not wanting to go out into that environment? I mean, the setup of the exhibit is such that there are two doors on either side that open, so one dominant individual can't stop others from going out if they wish to. However, and I have no data on this, my theory is that this particular gorilla group, the silverback didn't let go outside much at all. He tended to go out, if there was food scattered, to go out, come back inside. And because gorillas are so attentive to their silverback, it may be that they weren't prevented by what he did, but they stayed near him, and so they stayed inside more. Um, I wasn't able to look at dominance rank necessarily in any other way. I would guess that a different group with a different silverback and a different personality might use their outdoor space differently, but I can't say for sure. Okay, I think that's it. Okay, thank you. Thank you.